What's up, fishers? Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, we go play at the Commerce Casino at the 3-5 table. But before we get into those shenanigans, I want to ask you guys to mark your freaking calendar. May 15th, it's coming up. It's Saturday, May 15th. We're going to have a meetup game at Larry Flint's Lucky Lady over in Gardena, California. And it's going to be a butt ton of fun. We got myself, we got Happy Face Hold'em, we got Think Blue Poker, we got Jeff Stimson. We've also reached out to other vloggers out there. Hopefully they can make a special appearance. If you want to get into that game, send me an email on the description below. Also, you can follow me on my new social media platform that just came out. I'm sure you guys probably haven't even heard of it, but it's called, what's it called? It's called Instagram. Yeah, you go on and follow me there or simply just show up. I mean, worst case scenario, there's a board. Also, we are incredibly close to being monetized on this channel. And you know what, guys? It wasn't my goal to make money off these stupid videos. They were all only for entertainment purposes, and they still are. But now that we are incredibly close to that milestone, it's going to be kind of hard not to just press for it and try to hit that, that barrier. So if you are a subscriber of my channel, go on and give yourself a round of applause, a pat on the back. Thank you for being a supporter. Thank you for being a subscriber. And if you are not Right now will be a great time to hook a brother up. Go on and click that subscribe button, click that thumbs up button, that notification bell that's somewhere up there that really helps out the channel. And as a token of my appreciation, I'm gonna go on and give away a fish poker shirt. You know what? Two fish poker shirts. I'm gonna go on and give them away. I haven't done a giveaway in a long time. All you have to do to try to win one of these bad boys, comment on the section below. Let me know what city, what state you're watching this video from, and that is automatically going to get you into a raffle to try to win a fish poker shirt. And if you don't win, fear not, my child. You get a freaking sticker. Look at all these stickers that I've made. Everybody gets one. Thank you guys for being supporters. Thank you guys for subscribing. Let me shut up. Let's get back into our poker game. So we put our name on the board for the $200 game as well as the $500 game. And we get called for the $200 game first. We go on and we take a seat. We buy in for $200 into a game which we thought was a 2-3 game. But quickly realized we were wrong. We sat down at a 3-5 game. And instead of starting off with 66 big blinds, we only started off with 40. Not ideal, but we're going to just wait till our name gets called to the 5-5 game. And see if we can try to make something happen here. This gentleman right here has been opening up every single pot. He's been caught with his hand in the cookie jar several times, calling three bets out of position with shitty hands, leading out with gut shots. And this guy has just lost every ounce of respect by me. And I've been waiting to punish him for his stupid raises, and I haven't had a hand to do so until now. He decides to lead out for 10 bucks in the under the gun plus one, everybody folds it comes back around to me and i look down at ace three suited on the big one i go on and i rebump it i put 30 more dollars into the pot my opponent is the only person who calls and we go heads up to see a flop of king four five with one club although this board isn't really good for my hand i mean i still have a gut shot i have an over card and i have some back door action but it doesn't matter what the flop was. I had already made my mind that I was going to fire a bullet, maybe two bullets at this guy at whatever flop came. So I do exactly that. I bet out a bet of 50 bucks. He quickly folds and we take this one down with just sheer aggression. Hell freaking yeah. Now we look down at a couple of nickels in the cutoff and I go on and I make the discipline limp. The button limps, the small blind raises it up to 18 bucks. This is the same guy who has no respect for me. It looks like not a lot of people have respect for him either because he gets four callers, including myself, which I'd like to go on and take a little second to tell you guys that it took absolutely everything in me not to three bet. I am a new disciplined fish trying to play a little bit better, so... Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Anyways, we go five ways to a flop of 10-5 queen rainbow. We flop bottom pair and it checks to us. How freaking awesome is that? We fire off a bet of 35 bucks. Our only customer is our friend that has zero respect from us. And we go heads up to a turn. The turn is a king and this board, even though it wasn't so threatening on the flop, is getting a little bit concerning with the back doors and... You know, it checks to me again. I size up to 80 bucks. 
that does it. It doesn't take very long before our opponent folds and we take this one down. Hell freaking yeah. Hello, ladies. How sweet of you guys to stop by. Hell freaking yeah, we get dealt pocket queens on the big blind. Our opponent under the gun limps. Everybody folds, including the small blind. I make it 20 bucks. Our limping opponent calls the remainder 15 and we go heads up to a flop of nine. King ace with a couple of diamonds. Sure, that ace is concerning. That king is concerning and we can't help to think of a flush when there's a flush draw out there, but this flop is better for me than it is for my opponent. I believe what's uh, I believe I have what's called range advantage. Yeah, I, you know, I know that's a new word for me here on the vlog, but I've been doing my homework. I've been learning. And as far as ranges go, I know I have a lot to learn yet, but my preflop bet out of position should tell a story. It says that I have all the aces, all the kings, and plus I have what's called a blocker. You guys ever heard of those? Yeah, I have a blocker, the nut flush. So even though this board looks scary, I'm pretty confident it's not a threatening one. Nonetheless, I proceed with caution and fire off a bet of 25 bucks. My opponent calls and we go heads up to a turn. The turn is a four of diamonds. I go on and I pick up a little bit more equity in case I am indeed behind. And I go on and I fire off a bet of 50 bucks. Now, my plan is to fold if he jams his $200 stack or just call if, if it's a reasonable raise. But that doesn't happen. None of those things happen. He goes on and he lets it go. And we take this one down before showdown again. Hell freaking yeah. No, no, no. This isn't deja vu. I'm not going over the same hand twice. I actually got dealt pocket queens again. This time I'm on the button. There's two limpers and I make it 20 bucks when it gets to me. With three callers, we go four ways to a flop of six, 10, nine. It's a pretty damn safe flop. Everybody checks it. And I go on and I put out a bet of 50 bucks. We get one caller in early position and we go heads up to a six on the turn. Yeah, I know that pairs up the board and all, but I'm still not worried. I go on and I fire off a bet of 70 bucks, which is a little bit on the small side. But if he does raise me, I can go on and proceed with caution. And if he calls, also proceed with caution. But I, whatever the reason, I don't want my opponent to fold. I don't want him to fold his draws, even though it seems like everybody gets there with their draws against me. Ironically, I still want them to stay in with their draws. That doesn't happen, though. My opponent folds and we take another one down before showdown. Hell freaking yeah. Now, if you think our pocket queen streak is over, then you're kind of right. I mean, we get demoted to pocket jiggities right out of the microwave. Brad Owen, please give me a shout out. <laughs> I'm in middle position and I make it 25 bucks. Our opponent on the button calls, our opponent on the big blind calls, and we go three ways to a flop. One thing to note though, our opponent on the big blind, he recently just lost his entire stack when he shoved with ace nine. And yeah, well, keep that in mind. Anyways, we go three ways to a flop of 10, nine, four. Our big blind opponent checks. I fire off a wager of 45 bucks. Our opponent on the button calls. And now our big blind opponent decides to shove all in for $175. Jesus Christ. I mean, sure, he could have a set here. I mean, the only one that kind of is worthy of a limp would be pocket fours. Pocket nines or pocket tens, I really think this guy would have three betted, three betted that hand. But um, yeah, to be honest, I'm just not going to buy what he's trying to sell. I'm thinking of a shove myself, but I'm a little bit concerned about the, the opponent on the button. I mean, he called the three bet, called the C bet. I mean, he could have just top pair with uh, with a pretty decent kicker. I'm not sure. <sighs> the only straight that really would kind of make sense would be seven, eight. I mean, I guess he can have Queen Jack, but I mean, I blocked that, so I'm not really that worried. I... Anyways, I ultimately decide on a call with the intent of folding to a reshove because this opponent still has about 300 bucks left behind. And yeah, and it, thankfully that didn't happen. He ended up folding and now we're heads up to a turn and we go heads up to a river. Our opponent turns over 10-8 for top pair with the back door straight, which he almost gets 
but ultimately breaks out on the river and we take another sick 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 pot hell freaking yeah all right for the third time today we look down at pocket queens this time we're looking them down from the small blind everybody on the table folds except our opponent in the cutoff he decides to put out a wager of 25 dollars this is the same opponent who just got stacked the previous hand and was stacked a few hands before that so now he's in it for about 400 bucks he's rebought once again and i'm sure this guy's trying to get some of his money back unfortunately though he is trying to get it back at the worst timing because i go on and three bet him to 95 dollars he reluctantly makes the call and we go heads up to a flop of king nine four sure that king is scary a king is always going to be higher than a queen but that's not going to slow my horses down i go on and put out a c bet of 100 dollars he ultimately ends up folding after thinking about it for half a second and we take this one down again. Hell freaking yeah. All right, for this last hand of the night, I look down at eight, nine offsuit on the small blind. Everybody on the table has folded except our opponent in the cutoff who decides to limp in. Now I'm looking at my opponents and I'm asking them if they actually want to play this, if they rather not chop or, I mean, we're going to lose money three ways. Our opponent in the cutoff, she says no chop. Very well then, I put my remainder two bucks in, our opponent in the big blind, he decides to bump it up. He puts $10 into the pot, and I'm not sure if he legitimately has a decent hand, or he just knows that it's not worth playing three-handed and just wants to make the pot a little juicier. I don't know. Anyways, our opponent in the cutoff calls, I put the remainder 10 bucks, and we go three ways to a flop. The flop is eight, nine, ten. The only problem with this flop is that my dumbass went ahead and checked in the dark and now I don't have any action. Our opponent on the big blind though, he he's a good guy. He goes on and he opens up the pot for 15 bucks. Our opponent in the cutoff calls and once it gets back around to me, I repop it to $50. Yes, sir, 50 bucks. My opponent in the big blind, he puts the remainder 35 bucks in. Our opponent in the cutoff, she decides to let it go, and now we're heads up to see a turn. The turn is a seven. It's a pretty disgusting turn card because now any six or any jack makes a straight. But what kind of six could my opponent be holding? This guy seems pretty solid, so maybe I would say pocket sixes? If he's holding a jack, maybe ace jack, king jack, queen jack? You know, I'm not sure. I'm actually just hoping that he made a pre-flop bet just so he can make the pot a little bit bigger and we could have something to play for. But that's just going to be my thing. I, I'm just going to I'm going to gamble on the fact that he put money in pre-flop just so we can have a bigger pot and the rake won't kill us. Anyways, I go on and put out a bet of $80. Obviously, I'm going to go on and fold if I get raised. If I get called, I'm probably just going to shut down on the river unless I hit a miracle eight or a miracle nine. But other than that, I'm probably just going to check. But that doesn't happen. My opponent goes on and lets it go right there. And then and we take another pot. Hell freaking yeah. Another pot taken without leading it to showdown. Hell freaking yeah. Now it's time to rack up and get the F out of there. All right, fishes, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We went ahead and went in for 200 bucks. We are out for 1,062 bucks. You, if you ask me, that's a freaking amazing day. By far the biggest win I've ever had at the Commerce. So I ran good. I played well, in my opinion. And you know what? It is what it is. Don't forget to click that thumbs up button, that subscribe button, that notification bell. Like I said, it really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys on May 15th. Be great to see you guys. Come have a beer. Come have a good time. <laughs> and well, I'll see you guys on the next one.